Hi everyone, welcome back to Alice and the Giant Bookshelf. Today's video is my 24 books from the Giant Bookshelf for 2024. Everyone. Welcome back to my channel or welcome if you are new. My name's Alice and I have way too many books and in the interest of getting through some of those way too many books that I have acquired in 2024 I thought I would make a list of my top 24 books from the giant bookshelf that I need to get through in 2024. Last year I did over ambitiously make two different videos with 23 books for 2023. Not all of them were actually on my giant bookshelf, which I think looking back was a little bit of a mistake, although I did read some of those that weren't on my giant bookshelf. So there will be a video to come in the near future about how I did with those two lists. One was 23 classics for 2023 and the other was 23 crime and thrillers for 2023. So I'll be looking back on those and letting you know how I got on with those lists last year. So all I'm going to say about that before then is that let's just say picking 46 books that I wanted to get to for the year was probably a little bit of a mistake, a bit ambitious. Today I'm choosing 24 priority books for the upcoming year from my giant TBR. I wanted more of a mix of genres this time. 24 classics is realistically more than I will read in a year. So I've broken my list down this year into six categories with four books in each. Two of those categories are not really genres, they are classics and modern classics and the other four are genres. Yeah, without any further ado let's get into the 24 books that I'm hoping to read in 2024. Now some of these have only been on my giant bookshelf for a very short time. I would say the majority have been bought since I've been on booktube and they are just ones that I really am looking for the excuse to prioritise. So Let's start with classics and I have four classics for you. I haven't included any classics that I've already started so those will be ongoing into the new year. Classics I would like to get to next year and um, the first one is Oliver Twist by Charles Dickens. Um, I'm currently reading Dombey and Son by Charles Dickens so I will want to get through that one first before attempting another Dickens but this is the only other Dickens book on my shelf at the moment so this will be the next Dickens that I read when I've finished Dombey and Son and yeah I hear a mixture of things about Oliver Twist. I know that it is one of Dickens' earlier works. I know it is one that is not without its controversies and problematic characters, but I nonetheless would really like to read it. And I did haul this one when I went on a trip to Rochester which I did put in a video. I think that was back last year. Oliver Twist is the first of my 24 of 24. I'm not going to say a huge amount about each book today because 24 books is quite a lot to talk about. So the second book on my classics list is Cranford uh, by Elizabeth Gaskell. This volume actually contains Cranford and Cousin Phyllis and was one my mum found for me in a charity shop last year. I have put this on a couple of TBRs since, mainly in Victoria, and I just didn't get to as much Victorian fiction as I wanted to in Victoria. So I would quite like to get to this before this year's Victoria because I think it's one thing to think that I really enjoy Victorian literature when I read it. I think the problem is that I end up putting too much pressure on myself in October to read Victorian books when actually I could just read them throughout the year and make things a little bit less difficult for myself. So Cranford is one I would really like to get to to try Elizabeth Gaskell for a second time as I've so far only read her short stories. Next up we have Silas Marner. This is a relatively recent addition to my TBR that I received from Emily from Novel Novels for my birthday this year 
and this would be my first George Eliot book if I should get to this. And I wanted to read Silas Marner before trying any of the bigger George Eliot books because I simply don't think that I will get through Middle March or The Mill on the Floss if I go into those without having tried any other George Eliot. So we're going to start with one of her shorter ones, Silas Marner, and see how I get on. And the final book on this classics section of the 24th 24 is a veteran of this list, which is The Collegians. This is definitely in the TBR tin. Um, the Collegians by Gerald Griffin. This is an Irish author and I got this many years ago in a set of Atlantic Books Crime Classics. There were 10 in this set, and this is the final one <laughs> that I haven't yet read. And those books really ranged for me from books I really didn't enjoy. One of my worst books of all time was in this set, which was The Riddle of the Sands by Erskine Childers, which I found so boring. <laughs> But on the positive side, there were a lot of good books in this set as well. I read Bleak House from this set. I really enjoyed uh, The Murders in the Rue Morgue. The Man Who Was Thursday was also good. And yeah, oh, and Lady Audley's Secret by Mary Elizabeth Braddon was excellent. So I heartily look forward to The Collegians. And it's a classic that I don't really know a lot about, other than it is a bit of a forerunner of the crime genre, which is what most of the books in that set had in common. That's that one, and let's move on to modern classics. So the modern classic section of this list is the one where we will find the chunkiest books. And I've balanced those two chunky books with two very slim volumes. So the first one, and I've really wanted to get to this for a very long time now, is The Bonfire of the Vanities by Tom Wolfe. This is a modern classic from the 80s, I believe, and it's described on the back as a day glow Dickens. I think that this is about uh, like a bond trader and is set on that sort of scene in the 80s. And I'm, I've been really interested to read this for a long time. Um, I may have partly forgotten why I was interested in it in the first place. But again, I think that this is a book kind of on the cusp of the crime genre, um, but not quite probably. So yeah, I'm looking forward to finding out more about it by finally getting to it. This is also a veteran of the 2023 list. Next up, we have a lovely slim volume. I will probably read this one in January for the past and future readathon, and that's Of Mice and Men by John Steinbeck. I actually only acquired a copy of this book earlier this year, and this one was sent to me by the lovely Gemma from Gem of Books, so thank you for that, Gem. A lot of people read this at school. We did not read this at my school, so I feel like I've missed out. This is a book I have meant to read for such a long time, and I would love it if I finally ticked it off in 2024. So next up we have a very big project that is definitely taking place in 2024, hopefully starting in January. And again, this one involves Gemma from Gemma Books. And we have, um, you may say foolishly, but we will see, arranged to buddy read this book starting from January, and that is Ulysses by James Joyce. It escapes me why we are going to read this, but it is of course a modern classic. And if we can get our brains around James Joyce, I am sure it is a book I will feel very interested about reading. And I'd probably feel quite proud of myself if I do make it through Ulysses, but either way, I'm going to give it a really, really good go. So that's the third book on my modern classics. And last up in modern classics, I've got a good old Daphne du Maurier, which is The Flight of the Falcon. I picked this one up in a second-hand shop in Brighton last year, I think, 2022. I have now read all of the other Daphne du Maurier's that I had on my TBR. This is the last one that I have, but it will definitely be on the lookout for more. Daphne du Maurier is definitely an author. I want to read all of her work. Don't know an awful lot about The Flight of the Falcon, but I'm looking forward to more du Maurier. Right, next up, we go into the genre categories, and I have four books for crime and thriller. 
And the first one, I really would really like to read some of my hardbacks that have been sitting on my shelf next year. And I've selected Age of Vice by Deepti Kapoor. I won this earlier this year in a giveaway on Instagram. Really look forward to getting to this. Again, don't know an awful lot about this, but I think it's a bit of a gangster story. I believe it's set in India and I've heard a lot of good things about this one. Yeah, I'd love to find out if this is a really good new crime book that came out last year. Next up we have, this book is just sort of a random placeholder really because it's just representing an author who I must get to in 2024 from crime and that is Dick Francis. So it won't necessarily be this book hot money but if you watched my recent all of the books on my giant TBR video, you will have noticed that I have about 20 Dick Francis books on my giant TBR. And that is because I actually own all of Dick Francis's books. The half that I've already read are living at my mum's house at the moment. And the half that I haven't yet read are here. And he was a very prolific writer. So when I collected these all up from charity shops, I kind of expected to sort of binge them at some point. And then I started booktube got distracted by shiny new projects and didn't read the Dick Francis books. So any Dick Francis book, hopefully I'll get through more than one because I didn't read any this year. But yes, the second book on my crime list from 24 for 24 is Dick Francis. This one is also a bit of a crime classic, modern classic type thing. And that is The Grifters by Jim Thompson. I am a fan of Jim Thompson. I've read two of his other books and they were both quite similar to each other, but I don't think that this one will be particularly similar. So the ones that I have read are his very, very famous book, The Killer Inside Me, which I would highly recommend. And also I think it was called Pop 1280. I may have got the number wrong though but that was a good book as well. And I acquired this on a shopping trip, I think in my first year on BookTube perhaps, or might have been last year. Anyway, I acquired this on a trip to London, a lovely bookshop, and I was really, really pleased to find such a nice copy of this. And I'm not too sure what it's about, but I think that this one is going to take me into the Californian underworld. So I look forward to this different crime fiction offering. And finally, on my four crime books, my 24 selection, we have Karen Slaughter, Cop Town. I do have two books by Karen Slaughter at the moment on my giant TBR, and I would really like to get to both, but Cop Town is a standalone, whereas the other one, Unseen, is from one of her series. I really want to get to both, but I'm going to put Cop Town on the list so that I've read that and it sounds really interesting. It's set in the 70s and the tagline is a hunt for a killer in a city on the edge. I don't think any of the other crime selections that I've picked are about like hunting for a killer so this will be a good one to get into I think. Next up we have fantasy and I've tried to pick four fantasy books from my shelves and I think I have managed that. If you think well, some of these are not fantasy then I've just been getting into fantasy so fantasy is probably the only genre I've picked here that I have many fewer books of than others. Now let's start with this one, um, The Obelisk Gate by N.K. Jemison. And this is a series that I started this year. I read the fifth season and I don't know if people would classify the fifth season as fantasy or sci-fi because it's kind of dystopian. I would classify it as fantasy because there were definitely a lot of fantasy elements for me and it made me really really want to read the rest of this trilogy so I will be starting with The Obelisk Gate and this is definitely a priority read for 2024. One that I've had on my shelf for ages and I think this is in the TBR tin is Gravesite by Charlene Harris and this is from a series about a character called Harper Connolly who I think was struck by lightning and can now find dead people. 
I'm not sure how because I can't remember. I accidentally, th I think I read the final book in this series first by mistake. Uh, might, maybe it wasn't the final one, but anyway, it was later in the series. This is the first one, I believe, and it's the only other one on my shelf. And it's actually the last Charlene Harris, I think, on my shelf that I haven't yet read. I look forward to getting to this one as well. Next up, we have um, an undisputed king of fantasy, I would say, which is Terry Pratchett with The Colour of Magic. Now, I started Discworld for the very first time this year, and I started with the death sequence and I've read Mort and I'm hoping to read Reaper Man between now and the end of the year so I also picked up in a charity shop this year The Colour of Magic which is technically the first book in the Discworld series so I think I will pick this up at some point in 2024 to see where it all begins with Discworld and to perhaps start reading um, this sequence. I think this is possibly about a char character called Rincewind who did appear very briefly in Mort, so I have heard of him, but yeah, uh, possibly a wizard, I'm not too sure. Looking forward to getting on with some more Discworld as well. And finally, a fantasy book I've had on my shelf for a very long time that I think is not in the TBR tin. And I bought this on a bit of a whim a long time before I really started getting into fantasy. I think my dad actually bought this for me um, on my suggestion. And that is Neverwhere by Neil Gaiman. I believe when I showed this in my recent giant TBR video, somebody did recommend it to me as one to prioritise and I'm glad about that because I did want to include it in this 24 for 24. I really like what I've read of Neil Gaiman so far which is just Coraline at the moment. I think I've read another of his books for children as well but it escapes me and I think this is set under the streets of London so yes we will see what kind of fantasy world this one leads me into. The next category I've selected of four books is sci-fi. I've definitely been getting more into sci-fi this year but I would say that all of these are of the kind of dystopian or uh, post-apocalyptic type of sci-fi rather than like space sci-fi. <laughs> it's four dystopian books basically. We have The Carhulan Army by Sarah Hall. I got this one for my birthday and I picked this one myself. This is touted as a bit of the Lake District's answer to The Handmaid's Tale so definitely sounds quite dystopian and yeah I've enjoyed Sarah Hall's short stories that I've read so I really look forward to getting to this one. And next up I don't know how sci-fi this will be but I've also assumed it to be a bit on the dystopian side is Hummingbird Salamander by Jeff Vandermeer. I think this might be kind of climate disaster fiction but I'm not sure and really really loved but really found very scary Jeff Vandermeer's Annihilation trilogy. I can't remember what the name of that trilogy actually officially was but it started with Annihilation and there were two other books and it was terrifying. This is Jeff Vandermeer's most recent book I believe. I bought it towards the end of last year. I think this is a sort of going towards the end of the world type of book but I'm absolutely intrigued to see what Jeff Vandermeer does with that concept. So very much looking forward to this one. Next up, another book I bought this year, The Man in the High Castle by Philip K. Dick. I know Philip K. Dick is a very famous sci-fi writer and I actually have one of his other books on my shelf which is Minority Report and uh, I think that's short stories. This one is also a dystopian take um, examining America after the Second World War if the Allies had lost. I bought this one in a charity shop. I'm really into reading dystopian type things at the moment so I'm hoping to get to this in 2024. And the last one in this category is are this beast, The Ferryman by Justin Cronin. Now I could have chosen The Twelve by Justin Cronin which I've had on my shelf for considerably longer but I don't think I can hold out much longer on reading this gorgeous book that I got for my birthday from my husband. This one I think is set in more of a utopia than a dystopia. People are living a very privileged life as far as I can tell from the blurb but the ferryman of the title, I believe, um, receives a message 
the world is not the world. And if that isn't a fascinating premise, I don't know what is. I cannot wait to read this. And as I've said, I do want to get through some of the bigger hardbacks on my shelf, especially ones that I bought or acquired very recently because it would be nice to read them before they go into paperback. It's my last sci-fi one. And now we are into my final category, which is fiction. In my fiction category, I've got a very mixed bag. I've got a book that I've had on my shelf for a very long time. I've got a book that won't even be out until 2024. And I've got two books that fall in the middle of that, that one that I got last year and one that I got this year. So intrigued by all of these, but let's start with Maggie O'Farrell. You can see that this was bought in hardback, I think by my mum and she passed it on to me many, many years ago. And it's the hand that first held mine. I think I've really enjoyed every Maggie O'Farrell that I've ever read, particularly her debut After You'd Gone and her recent book, The Marriage Portrait, are standouts for me, I think. A few of her others I read such a long time ago, I don't really remember enough detail about them. I believe in The Hand That First Held Mine, there is a more historical storyline and a present day storyline. And I think that that's something Maggie O'Farrell always does really, really well. I absolutely adored Hamnet, of course. Um, I think that that's her absolute masterpiece but I would really, really like to read this one and uh, get, probably even get some more of her backlist this year as well. Yes, always an author whose books I have really enjoyed so far. The next one is the one that is not actually out yet. This book is due out in the spring of 2024 and that is why I would really, really like to read it before the spring of 2024 because I have certainly since I've been on booktube I have never had an uncorrected proof copy to read and I got this one as a freebie in my bag from the Women's Prize for Fiction when I went to the Women's Prize for Fiction live this year and this looks really interesting it's called The List of Suspicious Things by Jenny Godfrey and because it's a proof and I don't have any other proofs on my shelf I would love to get to this before it comes out next year find out why it has been supported by the Women's Prize. I think this might be set in the 80s because there are mentions of um, when Thatcher became Prime Minister on the back of this one. I don't know what this will be about at all. The next book I would really like to get to is Amenable Women by Mavis Cheek. Um, this one was one that my mum found in a charity shop for me last year when I was reading the uh, Six Tudor Queens series and more specifically when I was about to read the Anne of Cleves book I think because this on the front here is Anna of Cleva, Henry VIII's fourth wife and this is a book I think actually set in much more modern times about a woman who becomes fascinated with Henry VIII's fourth wife Anna of Cleva and I think I've finally left it long enough that I'm no longer so tutored out uh, that I can't read this. And yeah, I very much look, look forward to seeing how this intermingles Anne of Cleves' life with present day. <laughs> we will see. So that's probably the most historical book on this list. I couldn't fit historical fiction as a category into the 24 because I don't have an awful lot of out and out historical fiction. So if you want to recommend me some historical fiction down below, please do. I would love to hear from you because again, another genre that I've probably been more into this year than I have in the past. But the final book on this 24 books I would love to prioritize in 2024 from the giant bookshelf is Everyone is Still Alive by Kathy Rensenbrink. This is another one with an association with the Women's Prize for Fiction because I bought this at the Women's Prize Live when I met Kathy Rensenbrink and was a total fangirl for Kathy Rensenbrink. Um, I think she might have thought I was a bit crazy but I don't mind because it was so lovely to meet her and she very kindly signed this for me and said it was a great pleasure to meet you in Bedford Square so 
that made my day and I can't wait to try Kathy Rensenbrink's fiction because I've so far still only read her Dear Reader book, one of my favourite, favourite books of all time, a book about books. I know Kathy Rensenbrink is great at non-fiction writing but I would love to try this foray into fiction and I would love to try it sooner rather than later. So this is my final pick for my 24 for 2024. So that is it for my 24 priority picks for 2024. I would love to hear from you in the comments. Which ones do you think you would like to read? Or have you read any of these? If so, let me know. Do you think I will have some success with reading these 24 books? Um, hopefully I haven't set myself as much of a challenge as last year when I set myself 46 books but more on that soon and um, if you have enjoyed this video today please do give it a like please do consider subscribing if you haven't already and I will hope very much to see you all again soon for another video all about books here on Alice and the Giant Bookshelf. Bye for now!